For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We're going to tell you in each and every time about Jesus. Jesus compared to what you think. The love of God is for God so loved the world that he gave his son. That son is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. There is no other means to get to a heaven, any heaven. There is no other heaven but that of the bold of God the Father, the Almighty, Jehovah. There isn't a Catholic heaven, there isn't a Baptist heaven, there ain't a Muslim heaven. There is one heaven, glory. And there's no other way to get to that heaven. God the Father, the creator of all life. But by Jesus Christ who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Whatever you think, whatever you believe, if it's not according to the scriptures, you are dead wrong and in trespass and your sin without God, without hope. Now, when you have Jesus Christ who died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures, then you have the biblical means of salvation wrought by God, the Father. you got to realize that there is a death coming. Death is 100% sure. There is no one of power in God to cast a wicked man into hell at any moment. Man's hands cannot be strong when God rises up. The strongest have no power to resist him, nor can they deliver out of his hand. He is not only able to cast a wicked man into hell, but he can do it most easily. Sometimes an earthly prince meets with a great deal of difficulty and some doom in a rebel who has found means to fortify himself. He has made himself strong by the number of his followers. Not so with God. No fortress is any defense from the power of God. Though hand join hand and a vast multitude of God enemies combine to associate themselves. They are easily broken in pieces. They are as great heaps of light shall before the whirlwind and large quantities of dry shovel before the devouring fire. The flames of hell. When we find it easily to tread upon and crush a worm that we see crawling on the earth, so it is easy for us to be cut or singed and slender as a thread that hangs easily. Thus as easy as God when he pleases to cast his enemies down to hell. What are we that we should think to stand before him, at whose rebuke the earth trembles, before whom the rocks are thrown down. What do you think you're going to mash yourself against the holy, mighty God? Would you have the nerve to walk up to Jesus and say, this is more important than you, Jesus? What I believe is more 
finished in the finished work that you've done, Jesus. When Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. And when he said it is finished and signed and sealed by the scriptures, by the love of God, that salvation can be only set upon the Lamb of God, which take away the sins of the world. God will not take any more. God will not allow anything but the blood of Jesus Christ to save your soul. He cannot do work. He will crush your work in the ground as you would with a worm. Because your work cannot meet the work of Jesus Christ, the Son. I cannot crucify myself for salvation. I cannot shed my blood that you may be whole and made right. For I and you are born of a man named Adam. We are in sin. And the wages of sin is death. And rest in sure in the assurance of your life, it will come to an end one day. And you will leave it all behind. You cannot take anything on this earth with you when you die. According to the Bible, there's only one thing you can take with you to heaven. One thing. Those souls that you led to Jesus Christ by any form of witness that's approved in the Bible. That's it. Your fruit and your vegetables, you cannot take to hell. You cannot take your money to hell. You will have no need of that as you're tormented in the flames forever. Nor can you lavish in New Jerusalem all your boastings and all your materials. That's not needed. When we get to heaven, we will rest upon the finished work of Jesus Christ. The Son, of, the Son of God would take away the sin of the world. When you fall into the pit of hell for all eternity, nothing is going to give you satisfaction. As you will pay for your own sins for all eternity. Now you can pay for your own sins. Or you can trust on the one who suffered and died for sins upon the cross. And on the third day arose from the dead. You have that option by God. You can be saved, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Or you can burn in a devil's hell paying for your own sins. I can offer you a car and say this car is free, it's been paid for, it's yours, here's the keys. Or I can sell you a car and you've got to make payments for four to six years on that car. And that car may never be yours if you don't finish paying. <laughs> In hell, you're making the payment of your sin. And yet you will never get a finished title. You will never get a paid in full in hell. Because there are no dates in hell. There are no calendars in hell. You go on in the lake of fire, burning for your sins, which Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, will take away your sin. The 
Because you're to believe on him. And the torments of hell would be if you heard a loud mouth preacher speak to you of the way of salvation and you have chose to refute, you have chose to deny, you have chosen to scorn and reject the message being preached to you out of the Bible that Jesus saved. And that moment when you wake up in hell, you will know that Jesus saves and he is no longer able to save your soul. Once you die, you're not coming back. Now they can get the paddles and they can resuscitate you, but you didn't die. But once death is final in your life, your eternalness, your life after death results by what you have done when you were living. What did you do when someone brought you to a Bible-believing preacher in a church? What did you do when you saw that gospel track in the bathroom of that public place as you sat there and you read it or rejected it? What did you do when I sent the Bible preacher to you when you went shopping for fruits and vegetables? What did you do when you passed that radio, that television set, of that Bible-believing preacher preaching about salvation? What did you do? You see, before God passes judgment, he sends his people to warn you of judgment coming. And I'm here to warn you that you will die... And if you die without Jesus Christ, you will burn in hell. H-E-L-L. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ or you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will go to heaven, capital H-E-A-V-E-S. But you cannot get to heaven without J. It's not M-A-R-Y. It's not B-A-P-T-I-S-T. It's Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Now, the fake news is that these particular people are Christians. And yet they're trusting in anything but Jesus Christ. There are two classifications of people in the Bible. You're either saved or you're lost. And we can throw a whole bunch of ism, ISIS, radical. We can throw all kinds of titles, church names. But if you are not a born-again, Bible-believing Christian by the faith of Jesus Christ in your heart, the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse you of all sins, you are classified as a loser. And you don't win. And you have the opportunity of winning right now. You have the opportunity to be on the winning side. Step forth, repent of your sins, and put your faith and trust by your heart through the Lord Jesus Christ in the gospel that he died for your sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now notice, I did not say come join the church. Oh, man. I did not say come up and put money. I didn't say to do anything but believe. I'm not going to give you a law. I am not going to give you an ordinance. I'm not 
going to give you rules. I'm not going to give you a plate. I'm not going to give you a church. I will give you Jesus Christ, and the only way for you to get that is by faith and belief from your heart. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. You can go and be with God. You can settle down right now and get the ticket to heaven. Though you live 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years, you can settle your name down the last book of life, come out and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. We got a King James Bible right here. We will show you what you need to do to be saved. You can't just say, oh, Jesus, and be saved. You've got to come by faith in Jesus. Hell is the worst place you ever want to be. Heaven is so beautiful. It's so great. It's so righteous. In heaven, you get a new body. In heaven, you have no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears, no more anger, frustration, no more negativity. A body that will never have pain, that will never suffer. Isn't that the room enough to taste the Lord to see that He's good? Come on, look at your medicine cabinet. There are no medicine cabinets in glory. Now, salvation in Jesus Christ may not take care of your problems here on earth, but oh, when you die, the glory that you get to follow. Please do not be thought that what I'm preaching right now will be everything will be made hunky and dory and great and wonderful. That's not true. But when you die, it will settle your account that your name is written in the last book of life so that when you do pass from life to death, you can pass over to God through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, the gospel. But in your religion, you will not pass over. You will fall, and you will drown in the lake of fire. And yet you'll still live in torment agony. There's salvation in no other but that of Jesus Christ. Come and put your faith. Say, God, I have told a lie. God, I have stolen something. I have not pleased you. I have not done right. God, I want to get right. I want to believe on Jesus. I want to go to heaven. And you do that by Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Now, most of us have heard Mary had a little lamb, and his fleece was white as snow. Well, that little lamb was Jesus Christ. And that fleece was whiter than snow that any man could whiten. And it wasn't whitened by bleach. It wasn't whitened by detergent. It was whitened by the holiness of God, Jesus Christ. See, you may be in a religion where, oh, here's Jesus. And here is God, but they're not the same. You're not going to heaven. The Jesus you must believe on must be God, and God must be Jesus. Come forth. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Get your name written down the last book 
the right. Show your for show forth yourself as the sinner that you are. Come to God honestly. Because there's either righteousness or wickedness. And you lie in the form of wickedness. You cannot be righteous unless you come to God by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Listen, parent, you are told by the Bible you're to bring your children to Jesus Christ. And if you don't, it would be better for a millstone to be bagged around your neck and toss it off into the sea than keep your children from Jesus Christ. You've got to come to Jesus to be saved. God will cast your miserable soul off into hell by rejecting the salvation of God. We've got to preach the negative, because if we don't preach the negative, there is no positive. A bad return will has to have positive, and it's got to have negative to start your car. The negative that there's a hell, the positive that there's a heaven. But there's a long path between the two. The Bible speaks about as a goal. And if you're in the negative, you're not ever going to cross over to the positive. And rest assured, if you're in the positive, you're never going to go off into the negative. If your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, you will never lose your salvation. Never. If thou shalt confess thy sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins as far as the east and west. Is there anything that God can forget? Your sins under the blood of Jesus Christ. Your sins can be forgotten forever if you are to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ the Lord. as a child, as a sweet child, come before the Lord and believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. Come. Bring yourself to the Lord as the sinner you are. Come on to the Lord Jesus Christ as the sinner that you are and put your faith and trust in the one that died for you that you may be washed. Fruits and vegetables are not what God's going to offer. And you can't be saved. You must bring your children to God in Jesus. Some of you are closer to death than you realize. You know why I say that? Because we don't know when death is coming. There may be something in your blood cells right now will give you a stroke and die. There may be a Florida driver out there who may come and hit you. Your heart may say, that's it, I'm done. 
But if you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ before you take that last breath, you will die in your sin, and you will end up in hell. And to make sure that you've heard the gospel, the gospel is that Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again according to the scriptures. That you may have eternal life by your heart, putting your faith and trust in his work and not your work. You have heard the gospel. You are now accountable to what you've heard. No matter where you're at. You cannot tell God, I never knew. Now you know. Now you may not believe it, you may not care about it, but that's what God said. God never asked for your or no man's opinion on anything. When it came to salvation of man, man did his part. He rebelled against the Word of God. And God the Father and God the Son got together and said they're, they're hellbound. Man has sinned. And there needs to be something done about the sin. And the way to work off your sin is for you to burn in hell. That's not a good choice. That's not a good option. And yet, what kind of option would that be for God to give you? That God would say, go to hell, and that's it, nothing else. And yet the son turned to the father and said, Father, they've sinned. What if I go and die and suffer for their sins? That they were to believe on what I will do for them. They can come and abode with you, Father. You see, it means the salvation according to the Bible was instituted between God the Father and God the Son. I don't think God was really... I don't know what to say. Son, you're going to go down there? We're going to leave my presence... They're going to mistreat you. They're going to beat you. And then they're going to crucify you. And years later, at Daytona Beach Farmer's Market, they're going to scorn you. And they're going to reject you. Father, I will go and die for them. And they will reject the Word of God. And yet still Jesus went to the cross for your souls. And you're going to stand up before Jesus and say, I and what I did is more important than you. You are a fool. There is nothing better than what Jesus Christ has done for you. He suffered and died according to the Scriptures. He was buried, and He arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That is the finished work of God. There is nothing else but the finished work of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No one can say that but 
the one, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. I know for a certain. Again, I'm not putting a date. I can't. But I will see all of you again one day. All of you. I pray it be at the judgment seat of Christ. Where you will be rewarded for what you've done for Jesus. I'd love to see you there. To be there is you must put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But many of you I will see again at the great white throne judgment. Now there I will not be judged because I have believed on Jesus. I'm saved and I know it. And I know I'm forever saved according to Scripture. These things have I written unto them that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know you have eternal life. I've done that. I've got eternal life. Now some of you scorners, simpleton, fools, God rejecters, I will see at the great white throne judgment as you are cast off in the lake of fire. And many of you will say, oh, I did it here. That's a bunch of hogwash. Because you have heard. And many of you have not believed. Come to Jesus as you are, a sinner, condemned. There is no other way but by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will save your soul from hell. The Bible says there is none that doeth good. No, not one. You cannot match your good that you haven't done before the good of Jesus Christ. You match your life against Jesus, you will be found wanting. You will be found without hope. Dead in trespasses. Alone in the world without God, without hope. And in that state, it's hell. But the finished work set by Jesus Christ will get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life and you will have eternal life in heaven. It's free. It costs nothing. Join nothing. No obligation but to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as a sinner. There's no strength attached. Death is coming. We just don't know when. Now is the day of salvation. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. Without that blood, you can make your payments in hell, but it will never be done in full. Nothing. 
There is no mercy and grace outside Jesus Christ. Nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The absence of God. The gospel that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scripture and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. It defiles your church. It defiles your belief. It defiles what you think. In the mirror of God, you look foolish without Jesus Christ. The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. You are foolish in the eyes of God. Are you really willing to risk your eternal soul to reject what God's offering you? Is that money that's going into your hand is so important? Is that deal you're trying to make right now more important than the eternity? Wake up, we're in America 2017. Someone may be packing a gun to do wrong and harm today. You don't know. A bunch of people went to a concert. Many entered off into eternity. You don't know when death is coming. And if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be damned in condemnation forever. Don't say, I'll put it off. You don't know how far you have to put it off. And you may reject the Jesus that I preach. One day you'll kneel down before Jesus and proclaim that He is the Lord. Probably in agony and bitterness. But I will kneel down and proclaim that Jesus is the Lord I love, hope, blessings, and gratitude. Because He suffered and died that I may be saved, that you may be saved. I look forward to seeing Jesus. The Bible says for a Christian to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. But for those who will not believe, he died and was buried and lifted up his eyes in hell. That's where a lost man goes. He goes to hell. And he stays there. And he lives there. And he can't move. He's got an eternal rental agreement with God about being in hell forever, and he can't break it. And yet you can go into the heavenly abode of God by the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. Another week, another message about Jesus and salvation. You better thank God for His long suffering that you were able to hear this message again. One day you're going to pass on. 
Or one day God say, hey, preacher, pack up your bags. I got somewhere else for you to go. I'm done with him. But if the Lord says, I'm done with him, pack up and move, you've heard the gospel that Jesus saved. You are without excuse. And if you die without Jesus, you will know that Jesus saved. 